All right, guys. We're nearing springtime. Winter's finally almost over. You know what that means. Yep, it's time to get the nice cars out on the road. So, I've got a couple things I need to do to the uh, M5 this year. Um, the uh, key slot has decided to stop taking my key, and although that's not really a problem on my car because I've got the comfort access, meaning I could just have to have the key in my pocket, uh, that acted up at the end of last year. So if that's still an issue, I need to be able to insert the key. And um, what happened is I'd stick the key in and it would just pop right back out. If nothing was holding it in. So <laughs> my last drive home on the last day last fall, I had to uh, hold the key in with one hand, driving one-handed, which is not ideal. So yeah, I've got, uh, got a new key slot. That's the part number there. That's what it looks like and it's on the steering column. Um, so to install this we have to take the steering wheel off, a couple pieces of plastic off and also the uh, all the um, turn signal stocks. What's a turn signal on a BMW for anyways? I haven't figured that part out yet. But um, that whole piece comes out and this is behind there. So within that big chunk that comes out is also the clock spring uh, and the um, optical wheel for the wheel position and my, my steering angle position sensor did have a fault inside the module that was locked. Uh, I couldn't clear it. So I think I'm going to take that apart while it's all apart and uh, clean the optical ring off. Uh, and then we'll do a, a reset on that possibly after um, with scan tool and do the relearn procedure. Uh, hopefully that'll clear that off at the same time. So, yeah, without further ado, let's bring in the beast and we'll uh, get to work. Don't judge, I know she's dirty, but I have a solution to that too. I bought a new toy last week that I can't wait to show you guys and try out. I haven't even taken out of the box yet, but it's uh, something to do with washing and pressurizing water. You might get the uh, hint out of that, but that should be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, step number one, we're gonna go disconnect the battery because anything electrical, that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, so in the M5, my battery's under the trunk here, and it's just going to be a 10 millimeter on the ground. Uh, more importantly than doing anything on the electrical, of course, is that um, we're going to have to pop the airbag out of the uh, steering wheel, and for that, trust me, you do want to have the batteries connected. Um, Safety alone, but also if you leave the battery connected and you disconnect the airbag, you'll get an SRS fault and you'll have to use a scan tool to clear that. A capable scan tool to clear that. So we don't want to go there either. Plus I kind of want to keep this face on me for a while. Uh, we're underneath the uh, steering column here. This is, this is the driver's seat back right here. So we're looking at the back of the steering wheel and you'll see there's a hole right here and to release the airbag what you do is you push up on this with a screwdriver and it's the steering wheel spring loaded so when you click up on here the airbag should pop off so push up on here there we go and there's one connector over here down on the left and it's just got one of those little push clips on it just right here and it pops out 
Now we should be able to pull the nut, or uh, sorry, the bolt out uh, with an impact. So, what is that, 15? And we'll grab a socket. Fifteen it is. It's the bolt. So now this thing should be fairly easy to pull out. Um, we do have to be careful because there's going to be some electrical connectors. A few, two or three maybe. So we're going to carefully wiggle it loose and see what we got. Okay. How do you come out? There we go. Just one connector right there. And it just clicks in right here. I do see also that the shaft here had a mark and there's a corresponding mark on the steering wheel to mark uh, which orientation the wheel goes back on. So that's great. Now we need to remove this uh, plastic. Just gonna hook our uh, under the hood lamp up in here so that we can get some more light. That's better. So underneath here, we've got one Phillips screw that I got to take out. And then hopefully you will be able to get the plastic off. <sighs> it just clips into place. Looks like we need to remove this first before we can get the plastic out of there. Actually, we might not even have to remove the plastic, to be honest. So let's go ahead and remove the clock spring. Looks like we've got four torques here that we got to remove. Nine. Nine? Oh. T20 is the size for that guy. Try to measure every time of the year. Weather's warming up, good cool cars are coming out. You get to catch up on all the maintenance on your car, waiting for the street sweepers to do their thing so you can get it out. That's fun. What are you stuck on? Nothing. Oh, some little clips down in there.
Okay, so you will need to pull this plastic piece down. There's a few clips on the sides here. And then pull it down out of the way because uh, down here is a connector for the clock spring. You can You can probably get it from above, but it's, uh, it's a bit of a bugger to get to. It's got a little yellow clip right there that you have to try to push in to get it out of here. It, it, uh, it was easier to get this down and then push the cable through so I had enough room to click the, uh, the tab. So um, Also, to get this out, there's one tab right here and a matching one on the other side. And those, uh, those clicked in here and here. So I had to use a flat blade to click those off. And there's our clock spring. So now to get this out. Looks like we got a couple more black screws. And these are all the same same length screws, so I'll have to worry about mixing those up. That's two. Connector at the bottom here. There we go. Release. It's just got a tab on the back end of it. And it uh, clicked in down at the bottom here. Lovely. And for alignment, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll show you better on the workbench, but we've got uh, an arrow right here. And down inside here, there's a tiny little arrow inside here as well. They have to make, match up when we go to reassemble that piece. Okay. Now while we're in this far, we can access this key module here. I'll give you guys a closer look at that. That's where the, uh, so this is where the key slot is on mine. It's on the steering column. And uh, yeah, mine uh, will not hold on to the key anymore. So we're looking at a couple of torques here and then we should be able to remove it. Right, so here's what the new one looks like. Uh, two screws hold it in and there's one electrical connector right here on it. So it should just be a straight swap across. Um, this is the part number for the one I got. Uh, I've got the comfort access in mind. So this, this uh, I don't know if that makes any difference. I think this just this is an antenna to read the key when you insert it. So should be the same for, for all of the models. I think. Let's 
same Torx bit on these. Sorry about that. So same Torx bit on these two screws. And then careful when you pull the last one out because the uh, connector on the end of this is a ribbon cable. So you gotta be careful with that one. There's two little, two little tabs we can push in on the sides of it here. And it releases. So there's, there's the old one. And there's the reason it didn't hold the keys in anymore. Uh -huh. These two little bits just fell out of it. Which are obviously the little tabs that hold the key. They just came falling out of here, so... <laughs> that solves that mystery. Plug the ribbon cable back in. Make sure it's seated all the way. And then reinsert the screws. This thing costs right around a hundred bucks through uh, FCP Euro. I got mine at uh, ECS Tuning, but same same price. And uh, they offered me a lifetime guarantee at ECS Tuning as well, which is something FCP Euro is famous for. So that's good. Okay, we're back together on the key slot, so I think now we're going to take uh, we're going to take this piece over to the workbench and open it up for some surgery. Okay, we've got this over on the workbench now. Um, the optical disc is in here. This is the collar here that turns it, uh, and then there's a pickup inside here that reads it. So all this lint and dust and crap gets in there and dirties them up so we need to clean it out it's uh it's quite dusty in here so there are i believe some screws yeah i think there's some screws hiding underneath these i see one screw here and possibly one hiding under there so i'm just going to take all uh three of these uh stocks off here and then we'll see where we're at, if we can get to anything then. Um, smaller Torx, it's a uh, T10 for these ones. these just clip right onto the uh, board with a connector there's nothing to undo it just unhooks so a lot of other cars when you get a steering position fault um, you got to replace worn out stuff um, these don't wear out because they're optical so don't go buying a new one try cleaning it first save yourself some money but um at the same time they are prone to getting dirty so yeah you know all right get you guys in a little closer here uh those next set of screws look like they're a lot smaller uh we've got one here 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 and here's four of them total Wow, I don't think I've ever used this bit. T9? Yeah? Okay. 
four screws are out. Yeah. And this, this short piece of cable here just goes across to over here where we unplugged this one. So that can stay on there. And here we go. That is the optical disc. Looking like an old CD. Uh, mine doesn't look terribly dirty, but you can see, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but you see all the lint on there? It's definitely, definitely dirty. And uh, what we want to do is carefully pop it out of its holder because the backside is also possibly dirty. The lens sees right through the disc, so. Carefully pop it up from the back. Yeah, it's, it's dull looking. So I'll go ahead and get some uh, optical cleaner. I'll come back and we'll uh, clean that up. All right, I'm gonna be using this stuff today. Audio video head cleaner. Um, just because I already had some of this, I used to fix VCRs and CD players and PlayStations and things like that. Um, you can use isopropanol alcohol too. Um, I've seen some guys use rubbing alcohol, but I don't recommend that. Um, some rubbing alcohols are probably okay, but other rubbing alcohols have oils in them. So you got to be careful which one you get. Don't get anything that's scented or, you know, for chicka chicka bow wow night. Just stick with the clean, pure alcohols. <laughs> Same rules apply when you're drinking, I guess. Anywho. Oh, God. Uh, this here, I think it caught some grease on the backside here, but this uh, this muck here came off the lens, so that's, that's substantially dirty. Let's go to a clean spot here and go around one more time. Nice. So the other thing we want to look at is the actual optical reader, not just the disc. So you guys see this uh, clear lens here and then there's a chip with a window in it here. We'll want to clean those as well. So I'm going to go get a little Q-tip for that. All right. We'll dip in the pool. And then we're going to take this, just give it a nice little wipe. So this here emits a light, which goes through this light tube, comes out the bottom here, and shines the light through that rotating disc we just cleaned. And then this chip here will read it like a barcode. So it's got multiple little lenses across there that it'll uh, be able to read the, uh, the pattern on the disc. And it'll know its position. So pretty cool. Alright, so we're all cleaned up here, so yeah, earlier I mentioned there was an arrow, it's really hard to show with this lighting, I wonder if I can get a flashlight on here. Phones have lights. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to pick it up. You can kind of see it there, right where that 06 is. It'll be right, right down inside that hole. You can see an arrow in there. That has to line up again with the steering wheel later. The steering, the mark on the steering wheel, on the steering column, sorry. So carefully get this back in here. There we go. She's back together. 
Uh, reassembly is just going to be the re reverse of disassembly, starting with this uh, cover here. And then the four small screws. So I'll fast forward this bit and spare you the, uh, the boredom of watching me do it. Okay, next is the windshield washer controls. Just be careful you plug these straight down so they click in those connectors correctly. The multifunction stock and cruise control. And uh, this one's entirely optional um, because it's the turn signal indicator. <laughs> and uh, yeah, BMW gets a bad rep for these. Nobody uses them. Uh, there's lots of memes about um, cobwebs on this control because nobody touches it. And there's a good reason why. When you go to use this thing, they don't lock into place. It clicks once. That's it. Now you're committed to turning left. You do your left turn, you're good. If you're using this to change lanes and you don't turn the steering wheel enough angles to cancel it and now you're in your new lane, well, what do you do? On a regular car, you just quickly click up on this, unlatch it, your turn signals turn off, right? You do this on this one, it just clicks the other direction. Now you're going, telling people you're going back in the right-hand lane. So, uh, yeah, fun, a lot of fun. Sometimes you just got to do a little... Steering will jiggle just to get it to cancel, which is kind of strange. I'm glad they finally got rid of this kind of a design. But yeah, that's where that bad rep comes from. And uh, I gotta admit, I'm a little guilty of not using it when I'm changing lanes, just when I'm turning 90 degrees or more, because it's a pain. All right, I'll pop the rest of these screws back in here and then we'll go back to the car and we'll put this back together. All right, we're back together with the uh, our assembly here. So, uh, now what we've got to do is, uh, I fed these cables through here so we can get them connected easier. Um, I've lined up the arrow on the plate here with the arrow on the disc. Yep. And then we'll start pushing this back in. And at the same time, we have to connect these connectors back together. And I get it all in before putting it through the hole. Oh, well, thanks, BMW. They left uh, three millimeters spare to allow me to uh, plug it in before I inserted it into here. That's mighty generous of them.
Come on up, little guy. Don't be shy. There. There we go. Now, this lovely guy is going to want to not play nice, probably. I don't know how fun this guy is going to be to plug in. Wasn't too bad. Started. Okay. Okay, fun. Now this piece. Took a little finagling to get snap in correctly, but we're in. Okay. Back on with the wheel, lining the top, or sorry, the bottom uh, tab in here. You can only go on one way. Plug our connector back in. And then the bolt. And then, final piece of the puzzle, the airbag. Click. Line him up. It should just pop right back in. That's it. We're done. Okay, so I've just gone and used our uh, 
or my, my new scan tool. I bought the Ucanic uh, version 2 scan tool. Uh, I did a full scan of the car and no faults found. Actually, I shouldn't say that. There was a couple faults that were to do with low battery because my battery died over the winter. I should have put it on a tender and I bought a tender and I didn't hook it up. So that's my fault. But I uh, cleared those faults out. There's only three of them on three different modules and it cleared them successfully and there's no fault showing. So, yeah, I guess I, I might hook up IMPA here and just take a look in the DME and see if there was anything in there about the steering angle anymore. Because there was last year when I looked, I uh, felt that wouldn't clear. So I'm going to hook that up and give that a shot as well, just to make sure. All right, guys, we are good, in fact. Um, I've got one air here that's popped up this spring. Um, there's a fogging sensor in the HVAC system that's reporting bad. Uh, it could be because I haven't even got the car up to temperature yet. Maybe there's some do on it or something like that. I'm going to I'm going to run the air conditioning and run the car up temperature and drive it and see if that clears. This one here is because uh we have a Android head unit so it's not seeing the uh the CCC stereo. Um but yeah, other than that we are we are good to go. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um that wasn't too bad. I think that took a little over an hour to complete, including taping everything, or recording everything, I mean, not taping, just really showing my age here. So that was not a bad job. Um, the trickiest part probably is getting the plastics back together <laughs> around the shroud, to be honest. Um, everything else was pretty straightforward. Make sure you have uh, all the right sizes of torque bits, obviously, you can't do it without those. Um, get yourself a good set. Other than that, everything went pretty good. So. Next, uh, I think we're going to uh, <clears throat> clean this thing up a little bit, get it ready for insurance, and then we'll be taking it for its first drive of the year. So, once again, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate you guys. If you like what you see, please consider liking, subscribing. Share it with your friends if it'll help them out. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully something helps somebody out that I'm doing. If not, at least it's entertaining. All right, thanks a lot. Ciao, guys.